All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Amy Franco, who is up in Columbus, Ohio. How are you doing, Amy? I'm great. How are you doing? Excellent. And Amy's a keynote speaker, sales strategist, and author specializing in B2B sales and sales leadership development. She works with professional services, insurance, technology organizations to accelerate growth. And her book is called The Modern Seller and is an Amazon bestseller. And she's also one of the LinkedIn top 10 sales voices. And just before we came on air, we were just talking about this. The subject that we were going to talk about anyway was ag agility. Uh, which is one of the dimensions uh, in your book. But let's face it, given the circumstances that we're in today and likely to be in for uh, a, a period longer, agility really takes on a completely new, if you like, or even more important uh, uh, context right now. Because let's face it, there's a lot of people who are going to, in sales and in leadership management, are going to have to suddenly be very agile and pivot and figure out ways to work differently and to adjust to the circumstances and ensure that they that everything just doesn't overwhelm them but they 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 approach this in the best way possible absolutely and agility has taken on really a whole new a whole new meaning i would say at least in the short term but long term mm -hmm. the the that ability to have an agile team be agile as an individual agility is is a top 5 skill that organizations are hiring for today, and they will continue to hire for that into the future. And I think if there's one lesson that all of this is as is teaching us is that you do need to be agile, and you do if you have if you have a rigid mindset, if you have a very rigid way of doing things, if you have a very rigid organizational structure, even and way of working, that's not gonna that's not that that's not gonna support you in the future because who knows all the different changes that are ahead and and think and when things like this happen you have to be agility is the only thing that's gonna get you through. Yeah, and and interestingly enough about agility, when I was doing the research for for the book mm. on that, so so a modern seller is agile, and there's a, a few other uh, capabilities that that mm. I uncovered in my own research. But there's this interesting dichotomy with agility. So it's the ability to be able to move quickly to make smart decisions with maybe only partial information at hand mm -hmm. and the ability to pivot, but it's also needing to be balanced out with structure and consistency. So you, you really need to have both in yourself and in your teams to make agility work. Yeah. And I think one of the things, I mean, you, you, I'm sure you would agree. One of the things I think a lot of organizations are discovering right now is that maybe they haven't paid enough attention to process maybe they haven't updated their process particularly their digital processes and maybe yeah. they don't have the infrastructure to support an agile workforce yeah and and to that point it's um in some of the other conversations that i've had with folks is this idea around diversification mm -hmm. and we get faced with with something like what we're all dealing with at, at this moment in time and we have to make really quick decisions about where we're going to be headed and Many times where we head to is, oh my gosh, we need to diversify. Well, there might be some things that you can do to shift offerings. Sure. You're looking at your pipeline. You're trying to figure out how can I maybe continue to move things forward with those prospects and clients that can. But diversification and thinking through that is also very much, it's long-term. Because mm -hmm. if we make too many short-term decisions about how to diversify, I, I think we, we end up making bad emotional decisions versus looking at the long-term strategy, whether it's sales or anything else. So how are some how are some ways that people can become more agile? Because let's face it, agility doesn't come naturally to everybody. Some sure. people like some people like uh, a very set structure. They like lines of demarcation. They like it's like those people who who ask you immediately, "Where's my job description? Have you updated my job description?" And as I used to say to people, "Oh, there's only one line in your job description that actually counts, as far as I'm concerned, and it's the one that says." And anything else that your manager may ask you to do. <laughs> Duties as assigned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so if we think, um, not just in the context of immediate world events, but also mm -hmm. longer term, what are some of the things that we can be looking to build in ourselves and maybe in our sales teams if, if you're a leader? So there, there's a couple things. Uh, one is the ability to have uh, strategic speed. 
And uh, I, I did not coin that, that phrase. I came across it as I was doing research for the book. And I first came across the concept from Forum Corporation, <clears throat> excuse me, is they were uh, researching their own uh, customer sets. And what they found was that most organizations, they, they know that they need strategic speed, but they don't have it. And strategic speed is the ability to uh, balance the short term and the long term. So you're looking at some long term strategic goals. Maybe you're looking at sales goals. Maybe you're looking at other goals for the organization. How do you keep momentum and moving in the right direction toward the long term, but also being able to meet short term milestones? So that ability to build strategic speed is uh, is a hallmark of agility. Yeah, and, and now is probably, I mean, as good a time as any to start building that into your organization, because obviously you're going to have to do a lot of short term things, but you still have to build your track and your pathway out of this for the long term, right? For sure, for sure. So so if I'm, uh, you know, in, in the world that you're in, in the, in mm-hmm. the CRM world, if, if I'm, if I'm a, a sales leader or I'm an individual seller, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at my pipeline and having a real, a real hard look at my pipeline to see where might I be able to continue moving things forward? Where might I need to pivot? What's going to be short-term? What's going to be long-term? So that I have a realistic picture of what things are going to look like in a quarter or two quarters. Yeah, and it's a great point because, uh, as you said, I mean, agility is you, know, you have to be able to make decisions with not complete information. But I do think one of the things that's going to come out of this is um, and uh, as self-serving as this may sound, uh, you know, in terms of things like CRM, I think companies are going to finally say, you know, we can no longer uh, tolerate uh, people not putting information in, not keeping this up to date, because when, when something like this happens, it's, it's the first place you're going to go to try and get some visibility into what's, um, what's happening. And I think going forward, I think there's going to be more discipline brought into that, because as you say, the more the more information you have, the more agile you can be because you can make informed decisions. And, and this uh, th- this ties into one of the other uh, capabilities or dimensions in the book that I write about, which is a modern seller's entrepreneurial. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think that those two things, uh, entrepreneurial thinking and agility, are very closely yeah. tied. In, into your example there of of using pipeline data. Um, someone who thinks about their their book of business or their territory yeah. as a business, they are thinking way differently than someone who's just looking at what's next. They are looking at the top line and the bottom line of their 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 world. They're looking at their greatest opportunities. They're looking to mitigate risk. They they think differently. They make different decisions, and that feeds into being agile as well. No, absolutely. I and mean, we, we call it here, we call them the uh, the entrepreneur in, in, in the organization. We call them salespreneurs because they are the entrepreneur in an enterprise. Oh, I like that. I've not heard <laughs> yeah. that one. I like it. Yeah, we, we call them salespreneurs. But yeah, you're absolutely, you're, you're 100%. And I think that's, and I think if there's one thing coming out of this, I think it's that whole idea of you have to manage your own, you know, your own book of business. You have to, you have to manage it from, from top to bottom and really track it and own it. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, we're going to be looking at all the individuals to help us come out of this and everybody rally together. Uh, And if you don't have a good handle on your own book of business, then how is anybody else going to have any insight into it? Yeah, and and you're also touching on on something that we talk about. uh, I think about our our own self-agility, if you will. Mm You know, in and, and any given day, we have a, a finite amount of, of time, energy, motivation, and discipline. And in times like this, all that stuff is really tested because a lot of what we are used to having as our routines are thrown out the window. Mm-hmm. But this is also, I, I think, to, to look at it from the positive, optimistic side of things, sometimes when our routines get thrown out the window, it's an opportunity to reset and mm-hmm. look at the routines that... What are the ones that have served me? What are the ones maybe that haven't served me? How, how, and my days are different right now. <laughs> so so it, it's a good, it's a, it's a test. And to look at it positively, it could be a nice opportunity for us to, to, to push the reset button and put better routines into place. No, I, I, I 100% agree. And if I, and if I was to draw on an analogy, I think that most of us over the last couple of weeks, have you've, as you've walked around your neighborhoods to get your exercise, 
what have you seen a lot of? You've seen a lot of people cleaning out garages, doing big spring cleaning. And I think there's a great analogy there because I think this is an opportunity for all of us to, if you like, clean out the clutter uh, in our in our work garage, if you like, and start to organize things to your point better and figure out, you know, what are the things that are most important and what are the things that maybe are distracting and how am I organizing myself? Because as we say, I mean, I think... I think one of the points that you made at the beginning that's very important is not to confuse agility with chaos, right? It's not that you're, you're you just flex, flex here, there, and everywhere, and you're moving all over the place. It's a deliberate, it's deliberate move. Yeah, if, if if you're if you're always making pivots, you end up pivoting in circles, yeah. <laughs> and then you and you don't get anywhere. Um, your your comments about uh, about some of the routines and people cleaning out their garages, so to speak, uh, reminds me of a book uh, that. I, it's still on my bookshelf. It's a number of years old, but it's called The Power of Habit by Charles mm. Duhigg. And in the book, he talks about uh, how our brains form habits. And one of the things that he talks about is having to, to bust our own patterns. And part of that is building awareness about the patterns that we have and then finding new routines. And uh, I also add new environments in order to create better patterns for ourselves, better routines for ourselves. So this is a nice opportunity to maybe do, do some, uh, do some pattern busting as, as we're cleaning out our garages. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's fantastic. I think it's a fantastic opportunity because when are you going to get this opportunity? Well, hopefully you're not going to get an opportunity like this for a while. Again, to do that kind of uh, reflection and introspection, if you like, and look at how you're operating, uh, how you're operating today and I think the other thing is we're also, uh, as uh, for, for salespeople and sales managers out there, also got to look at there. There are there are positives right now in terms of you know, a lot of people are at home for the first time. A lot of people are working remotely for the first time. This is probably one of the greatest opportunities you have to engage with people because they might actually take your call. They might because they're, as you say, they're adjusting to this new reality and they're maybe they're li- feeling a little disconnected from the world. Yes, you know, it's so I it's so interesting that you say that because as I've been reading from other, you know, other sales experts, other sales authors, a, a few of them made have made that same point that um this is actually a potentially great time to connect with people because they they are looking for that connection right now because mm-hmm. many of them are working remotely is not part of their daily routine. So they're looking for that connection. And if we are, we're coming from the right intention, of course, yeah. but this is an opportunity to potentially connect with people that we wouldn't be able to get to otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe it maybe as part of that, it's going to help us to rediscover some of those really good connecting skills because uh, I mean, let's face it over the last while we've become very, uh, we become very reliant on uh, you know inbound marketing and all that and and sales enablement and all of these things that in some ways remove us from doing some of the hard yards that we used to do and and also maybe made it a little bit less personal et cetera and I think again, I think this was true before this, I think it's going to be true after it. I think people are are still looking particularly in sales, I think people are still looking for more of that relationship. It may not be done face-to-face. It may be done virtually, whatever. But I still think that connection and that trust building is critical. Yeah. And um, it, it's an interesting time because we are, it's to your point, it's, it's easy to hide behind technology. Like what, mm-hmm. whatever our tool, whatever our tech tools are that we sure. use to accelerate sales, it, it's hard. It's, it's easy to hide behind them. Um, but now we're in this point, it's, it's an interesting dichotomy, I guess, where now we're really trying to leverage technology to create better connections. So video conversations, uh, I can't even tell you how many virtual happy hours I've been to in the last (laughs) two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So uh, I'll be really interested to see how technology plays out as more of a means for real connection versus some of the stuff that we that's easy to hide behind. Yeah. And if you're if you're if you're a sales leader right now, what would be some of the advice that you would give to sales leaders to help their folks through this period and get them set up to be to be more agile and uh, flexible going forward? Yeah, yeah, I think a couple of things. If if you're in a sales leadership role, you you're in this interesting spot, right? Where not only are you kind of managing your own mm-hmm. self and what you're experiencing, but you have a team of people that are looking to you for competence, leadership, trust, 
So our role as leaders is, and, and I'm, I'm a big fan of, I, you don't have to have a leader title to be a leader, sure, but if absolutely. you, but if you, but if you are running a team and you have say a team of 10 people, they're looking to you for confidence that we're going to make this through that, that you have thought through plans and you're coaching them. So, so thinking about how we're handling our own emotions as leaders and how we're, how we are being seen by our team is one thing. And the second thing is, is um, making extra effort to, to reach out, to coach, to work through, let's, let's take a look at your pipeline. Let's see what, let's see what we're, what, what are we dealing with here and helping to coach your teams, I believe is even more crucial right Mm -hmm. now because uh, they're, they're working through a lot of stuff, trying to continue to sell, but also dealing with what's happening in their own lives. So they're looking to you for that. Yeah, and I think that's a I think that's a great point because uh, I think about controlling your own emotions as a leader, and I mean everybody knows the situation, so therefore you probably don't need to dwell on it that much. You need to show some, you need to show some path through it. And I think the other thing is somebody mentioned yesterday. You also, if you're in sales, you also have to look at the industries that you sell into. Some of them, yes, you may be you may be traditionally set into an industry that's pretty devastated right now. But however, there are other industries that are 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 booming or are actually doing doing better right now, who may be more amenable to to what you're selling. So I think you have to do a level of of research and really figure out what's going on. And even in your industry, even in the industries that maybe are, are getting hard hit right now, there's still going to be organizations in there that are looking to rebuild for the future. Yeah, and, and to that exact point, those, those industries that are hard hit, um, there may be some pockets in there that are mm-hmm. that are thriving that that we can find, um, and also looking at looking at our pipeline and looking at our opportunities for those industries that may not be as hard hit. So, so for myself as an example, um, I work with a lot of professional services organizations, and uh, right now there are some good pockets of them that are still uh, needing, needing my help and my sure. services. So that, that's, an, that's an opportunity for me to stay connected to them and work with them. But then I have a couple of other industries that I work with that, that are slow right now. And I'm just going to have to be empathetic and let, you know, be that sounding board for them because when we do get on the other side of this, they'll hopefully remember me for that. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think the worst thing you can do is just kind of throw your hands up and say, well, there's nothing I can do. Everything is and and see and 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 see a no before a no even comes. Yep. I think the worst thing we can do is hide as mm-hmm. sellers, as sales leaders is is to step back and to hide. This is sometimes where we have to have our own, our own courage to step yeah. out in front and still be visible and still lead because we will get through this and you want to be seen as a leader when we get on the other side of this. No, absolutely. And I have a feeling, Amy, you know, your book, The Modern Seller, I have a feeling that uh, a lot more people are going to be reading it now because it's going to, they're going to be looking at, uh, at this as an opportunity for, for change and to set them up for the future. And I do think the nature of sales is going to continue to evolve. So books like yours are, are highly critical, especially I think we couldn't have underlined agility more um, recently than if we tried. Right. <laughs> it's that <laughs> world events have handed us a great conversation about yeah. agility. And, uh, and thank you. Yeah, as I was writing the book, I really wanted to dig into the capabilities that I see as mm-hmm. like the skills behind the skills and ways that we have to, to think and act differently. And the way that I designed it, I really designed it to be a field guide. So. Yeah. It, so that you can make notes, you can apply things and, and really take your sales, your sales practice forward. And one last thing, a piece of advice I would give to people right now is probably the greatest opportunity you have to do a little bit of personal professional development. So getting like Amy's book, The Modern Seller or or other, uh, just invest a little bit in your in your own uh, in your own development. This is you're probably never going to get a better time than this. So instead of taking every free moment to practice your golf swing in the backyard or whatever it is you like to do. Um, take this time to actually invest in your own professional development and in the thing that puts bread on your table. And you never know, it might be the might be the thing that raises you above the rest when all of this is over. Yes, absolutely. Always bet on yourself, invest in yourself. And this is a great time to be doing that. Yeah, fantastic. Well, listen, Amy, this has been a great conversation. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. All of Amy's information will be in her contributor bio, links to her book and everything. But before we go, Amy, do please tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. 
Yeah, sure. So the two best places to find me are um, amyfranco.com. And then you can also find me on LinkedIn, uh, Amy Franco. And uh, the book, The Modern Seller, best place to find it is on Amazon, uh, Hardbound, uh, Kindle, and Audible versions. Fantastic. You have to have virtual reality one next. Right. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, the, maybe the next book. <laughs> yeah, maybe the next book. All right, listen again, Amy. Thank you. This is fantastic. And I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.